<coughs> so today we have the opportunity of receiving Josara Korngold among ourselves. And it's a true blessing because we are celebrating 13 years of the SSB. But you know, as Chico Xavier says, the cause is above the house. In Portuguese, it rhymes perfectly. A causa cima da casa. But anyhow, it talks about the beyond the celebration of a temple. It's about the goal of the temple, which is the dissemination of these teachings that make a huge difference in our lives. And also this year, we're celebrating 150 years of the Medium's Book. And that's why this talk, throughout this whole year, so we understand what is the difference. There are so many mediums there, you know, people say they're psychics, mediums. But is there a difference being a medium in the spiritist concept or a medium that understands that Jesus is our guide and model in the implications of it or not. So tonight we are going to dive into these reflections and also get to know for those who think oh, I'm not a medium, I'm not an ostensible medium, let the mediums be vigilant on their own, I can indulge into the, my invigilance every day. We are also going to address these issues as Josar is going to share with us the teachings of Spiritism. Certainly, when we leave these doors today, we are more responsible for what we do with these teachings. Day in, day out, as we get to know more, we are more responsible for how much we are sharing with others how much we are helping others, and what we do with this teaching. So we still have a choice. If you don't want to be more responsible, I'm joking, you stay here, <laughs> because the time will come for all of us. Jusara is the president and one of the founders of the Spiritist Group of New York, and one of the collaborators in this big network of um, the work in the English language. We're working together in advocating for the cause of the English-speaking meetings in the U.S. and everywhere else when people didn't understand why and probably still don't in some places. But as God wants, things are being winned over time. Also, she put together lots of translations that are foundational for Spiritism. At a time that um, no other major organization actually was fully committed and engaged. She also has been helping, she formed, um, founded the Spiritist Alliance for Books that has been working on these books. She also helps in the international context by her commitment to the International Spiritist Council. For the last three years she has been helping either by articles revision or disseminating the concept of the Spiritist magazine. And she's also now in the task force, let's say this way, of the United States Spiritist Council as it's Vice President. So a lot of engagement and commitments. Plus, in her personal life, she's married to John Corn Gold. She is the mother of a um, teenage son, Gabrielle. And she is also committed to a major charitable work um, that started in Brazil and has its, uh, let's say, branch in the United States. What is the full name again? Just our in, in English, right? I didn't know in English. Brazilian Child, Brazil Child Health, because I knew in Portuguese, not in English. Uh, major uh, to help, and she can tell us more about it, to help children in Brazil. So we have a lot to learn from her. Let us 
enjoy and think about questions that will probably benefit the whole group and people who are in the internet as well and will probably watch later at Spiritist Network so we can clarify things because the reality is this as we were just talking minutes ago especially in America the concept of mediumship being disciplined is so new because people think that mediums can do whatever they like whenever they like I'll never forget we were at this organization elsewhere in the US. They are not spiritists, but they are good friends. And they were trying to understand more about spiritism. And they said, okay, let's do a mediumistic meeting. And it was like the living room, people were eating, and we were going to close our eyes to do a mediumistic meeting without preparation. It's likely that we don't understand what is involved and the need of preparation and the need of a lot of discipline before we engage into this practice, not to commit fraud and not to be more disturbed. Because after all, Dr. Moreira from Brazil, a psychiatrist who worked very closely with Dr. Kenny at Duke University, he has published scientific papers showing that spiritist mediums are healthier mentally than even normal people. So if you think you're normal and you want to be even healthier, this talk is about mental health as well. So Josiah, please. Uh, sh should I use the microphone or no? Yeah, no this one is it. good. Okay. Uh, we turn on the live. Turn it off. Yeah, no, leave it. Here, no. Leave it like this. Okay, so many of you may wonder, <laughs> how can she do all of that? I was wondering that myself when she was describing everything that I do. <laughs> oh my God, I think the only explanation is because we actually work with Jesus. Because otherwise there would be no explanation. I mean, how can we find time to do all of that? How can you find the motivation? Um, it's... I think only can be explained by what we have here uh, in terms of understanding of ourselves, our spiritual nature, and what we have been receiving from spiritism. So once we understand that, and once we actually embrace the way of life that we learn from spiritism, I think we have more, you know, disposition to do everything that we have to do and to actually use these opportunities that are uh, given to us to evolve and to better ourselves. And one of them is actually mediumship. So today we are going to talk about s several aspects of, uh, of mediumship and I'm sure that uh, many of you here may already be familiar with that or maybe even a pro <laughs> regarding this knowledge because we are going to be starting with the basics because one of the things that we wanted actually to bring and like Vanessa was saying our goal was actually to present everything that we learn from the mediums book uh, actually celebrating this blessing that we have, this book, that we have this knowledge for 150 years. Not all of, all of us understand everything that we have in the book, but it's a book that has been used in, uh, by many um, philosophies, many organizations that want to actually engage themselves in the practice of mediumship. So this, the mediums book, uh, they are, uh, it's practically divided in this uh, introduction, preliminary observations that we have these four chapters, and then we have other chapters that are related to phenomena mediums and the surroundings. So we have 13 chapters that describes to us the phenomena, explains about the intelligent phenomena, the physical manifestation, how the, 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 the spirits act, how are they capable of acting upon matter and communicating with us. Then we have the, the part, seven chapters, that actually deal and explains to us the role of the mediums. What are mediums? 
regions, what are certain specialities that they may have in terms of their uh, ability as a medium, what could be the dangers that they can find, what are, uh, uh, how important it is their moral influence. And finally, we have 12 chapters that will t uh, tell us and explain to us about the surroundings, uh, how we are going to be dealing with obsession, with evocations, with uh, the meetings. Like for instance, Vanessa was explaining about someone wanting to have a, a communication from spirits in the, uh, a completely non-prepared way. So how important it is for us, why we have to be respectful, why we have to present ourselves in a certain way to talk to the spirits. So all of that we actually learn from the Medium's book. And of course, it's a book that we have to read several times, study several times, and always go back and whenever in doubt to go and, and to see what else we can learn from this. We have other books that are uh, very uh, important for us and I just put it here, those that we have in English. Uh, we have others now that also tell us about mediumship, but the main one would be the domain of mediumship, this obsession, and then we have these other books and, and materials that can help us and guide us in the work of mediumship and how can we apply that in our spiritual center. So one thing that we have to understand, and many people we still do not know that or cannot make this separation, is that mediumship is not a spiritism. Mediumship is just a part of spiritism. Spiritism is divided in, 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 in three uh, uh, aspects. The religious one, the scientific one, the philosophical one. The scientific one being one, the one that we consider to be this, the medium's book. So we, it's part of spiritism. It was through the communication of spirits that Kardec was able to compile and to present the codification to us. But spiritism is much more than just mediumship. And it doesn't even belong to spiritism because we know that it existed before. But the difference here is, is spiritism so far has been the only philosophy, the only doctrine that has presented to us a way of working with mediumship in a safe, uh, in a, a safe manner, enhancing our sensibility through education and showing what is the purpose for us to work in spiritism. I think it's very brave of some people just to say, you know, I, I wanted to work with, spirit, with, with mediumship or do this and that uh, without actually realizing the responsibility, the commitment, the discipline that has to be behind all of that. We are not talking about Ouija board. You know, it's like, yeah, let's gather some friends and have some fun and bring the Ouija board or the glass and let's play and see what kind of spirits are going to communicate. Because once we invite spirits to our home, they may like us, they may like our house, but we may not like them, we may not like their presence. And if they came so easily, especially when we are taking a, a mediumship so lightly, it's because we don't want that, it's actually, we don't want their company. We don't want them with us or next to us. So we have to pay attention to that. So we see that mediumship is present in part, in, in, in throughout humankind history. Socrates had an invisible friend. Moses uh, ta talked and received uh, the Ten Commandments for, from, from, from God. Jesus, at the moment of the transfiguration, also when he was expelling his spirits or uh, in the Pentecost day, showing the presence of mediumship all the time. Mohammed had an inspiration of Angel Gabriel and Emmanuel Swedenborg that we consider to be one of the forerunners of spiritism. And it's in interesting because Swedenborg, 
he was uh, 55 when he first started uh, having visions. So <laughs> for all of those who are still not rich at that age, you never know, you know, when the seed is there when, and when the time comes, the, the time is the right one, things are going to present themselves. And if we give the opportunity for them to present themselves, they actually are going to, 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 to come and to help us and for us to help us as well. Andrew Jackson Davis, that was, uh, is a remarkable personality and person in this country. The Fox sisters, that thanks to whom we have also spiritism, not only modern spiritualism, but also spiritism. When all the phenomena starts to happen with the little girls, Eleonora Piper, another one from this country, Edgar Case. And the, what we call the modern mediums, that uh, mediums that we are very aware of, that gives, it has been, they have been giving to us a lot of enlightenment, a lot of literature, and uh, and through them as well, in complementation, in co complementing the uh, what we have received from the codification of Alan Kardec, we also have been learning a lot. But all of those, uh, especially these ones that we are showing right now, they are adamant in affirming that they only work with the spirit, uh, with mediumship, with Jesus. Why with Jesus? Why do we call mediumship um, in the spiritism a work of Jesus? Because Jesus, first of all, is our model, is the guide that we follow. And through Jesus, we have learned to serve humanity. And mediumship is another tool that we have to be able to do that, to serve humanity, to help us be guided, enlightened in the path that we should be taken and how we have to take it. And so all this, uh, the energy, like we said before, the motivation that we will have to do that, we will only come if we have actually this understanding. So let's see uh, what is the definition of medium. So medium, mediumship is the one, the exercise of the mediumistic faculty. Mediumistic or mediumimic means being the intermediary through the anima, that is our soul. So we have a special faculty that will help us to have this connection, to have this interchange between incarnates and discarnates. And medium is the interpreter of the spirits. And as we learn from the medium book, Although everyone may feel in a greater or lesser degree the presence of the spirits or the influence of the spirits, only those that show clearly signs uh, and well-marked results can actually be called uh, truly mediums in the sense that we learn from the mediums book. Okay? But we are all mediums. We all have the possibility of feeling the presence of the spirits, of having a sensation. And I'm sure all of you here have already experienced that. If not for yourselves, you have a friend or a family member that somehow will describe um, an experience that do not belong to the realm of normal things, but what we call the paranormal things. So this is what we are going to be experiencing uh, because of the presence of the spirits around us. There are many people that come to the, the Spiritist Center as well sometimes and they, 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 they believe that they are mediums. I, I see, I hear, or everything happens. A lot of things happen at home. And, uh, and it's not because we feel the presence 
of the Spirit. So things are happening around us that we'll, we will necessarily present what we call an ostensible mediumship. And sometimes people come to the Spiritual Center and they, they, then they say that. And after a while they say, you know what, I thought it was a medium and now you know that I came here, now that I can actually work with my mediumship, everything disappeared. And depending on how long they are in the spiritual center, we may say that or not. <laughs> but now it's going to be on tape, so <laughs> they will know. I feel like saying, thank God, because it was not mediumship, it was obsessors. So if spirits come next to us, they may somehow impact in the environment that we live without us necessarily being a medium. And then once we go to the spiritual center and uh, the spirit moves to the light or whatever they go, right? <laughs> or we want to say they go, uh, the phenomena stops and we say, now that I am, I'm a spiritualist, I'm no longer a medium. You're never a medium. You are just suffering the influence and the presence of the spirits, which are actually two different things. And most of the cases actually are more related to the influence of the spirits than actually to an actual mediumship. So, and if the seats of the faculty are not there, nothing will work. There is nothing we can do to become mediums. We can fake mediumship. There are many stories that we have of hoaxes, people that want to fake uh, phenomena. But to actually have or be uh, being uh, capable of producing phenomena, we have to be actually mediums in the sense of having the possibility of producing well-marked results. But there is nothing for us to be frustrated about. If we, our goal is to serve, because this is the goal of mediumship, when we are talking about mediumship and spiritism, and of course, above all that, Jesus, is to serve, there are many avenues that we can do that. And even in the spiritual center, we can help in the several different uh, tasks that a spiritual center may offer to us. So the communication normally happens like this. And remember that Chico Xavier used it to say, the call comes from there. It's not me that calls, right? Uh, it's, it's so this little guy here is the one that is going to, to call the incarnate and to establish or to try to establish the communication. So is one of the possibilities that we as human beings may have. But of course, we have to be careful what we wish for. Many people being spiritists, sometimes they feel, oh, I want to be a medium. It's, you know, only mediums and spiritists um, in the spiritist movement may have a, a prestigious uh, role. It's absolutely not correct. It's, the mediums actually are the ones that are char characterized as being the servants. So, and we have several books that actually attest that, 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 that even in a, a mediumship meeting. It's interesting because sometimes even people that, uh, they, when they come to our spiritual center, they always want to know what they need to, to do or to have in order to join our mediumship group. And I said, well, we do have a list of requirements. And at the bottom of the list is be a, being a medium. People are so, so surprised. What are you talking about? You don't need mediums in your spiritist meet, in your mediumship meetings? Say, no, before medium, what we, we need is people that are going to compromise, that have at least the basic, the basic knowledge, that they do understand what mediumship implies when we are talking about mediumship with spiritism. And if you are a medium, it's a plus. But it's not a requirement at all. So this is how we, we address this kind of mediumship. So the levels of spiritist communication, we have the subliminal, 
that it, it functions, exists without an apparent manifestation or ostensible, like we were saying before. So it's evident. The, the, we see there is the presence of the spirits. It influences the medium, and the medium go there, conscious or unconscious, will write and will produ produce the manifestation. The subliminal, subliminal one is very interesting because it happens in our everyday lives. So how can we use the roots, or, or even if we are a, a what we call all ostensible mediums, let's say we live in a place where we don't have a spiritual center, where you don't have, much less you will have uh, a mediumship meeting that you can join, and so there are some people that believe, oh my God, if I don't work with my mediumship, if I don't put my mediumship into use, I'm going to go crazy, the spirits are going to persecute me, or whatever, you know, they hear about it. All the answers next to this, uh, this uh, uh, statement that I, I, I just pronounced are false. It's not absolutely correct to think that because we have a, an ostensible mediumship, if we are not able of exercising this mediumship in a mediumship meeting, uh, we are going to go crazy. Because what we said before, mediumship is a tool for us to serve humanity and to learn. There are many ways that we can serve humanity. There are many ways that we can learn. And so when we help others, when someone calls us at home, uh, desperate in need of assistance, we are, we, we are being mediums at that moment. We are receiving uh, intuition from the good spirits, from the a guardian angel of the person that wants us to actually uh, help the person and say things. At the same time, we can be also uh, uh, mediums in the subliminal way, not realize when we are doing bad things, when we are talking bad about people, uh, gossiping, criticism. It may be also a, we got, may also be at that moment a channel that will be uh, diminishing the self-esteem of the person of contributing for you know others to start seeing the person in a different way and we are going to show here uh, actually one slide one uh, illustration that will will help us to understand that so this is what we have to understand we have many ways of helping and we are always when we are actually uh, committed to help others surrounded and assisted by good spirits Signs of ostensible mediumship, we have unexpected emotional reactions, apparent sickness, shivers, moral and or physical indispositions, excessive irritability. Of course, I, I, I imagine that many people will feel <laughs> themselves in one of, uh, or see themselves in one or more of these descriptions that we are showing here. It, you may have other reasons, okay? When you go to the doctor and you have a headache and they say it's because of your tooth, you say, oh, come on, I'm talking about my headache. It may be something related to other things that it, it's completely to you unrelated at that moment. So it's not necessarily, especially when we think, oh no, I'm very irritable today because I'm a, I'm a medium now. It's just an excuse. So, but it tells our signs that we show why can we be um, irritated more easily because you know being capable of feeling more the ambient and the persons and the spirits around us depending on where we go we are going to start feeling and reacting according to the ambient that we are um, uh, that we are uh, we are right so it's independent of age gender place, social status, moral status, intelligence, and consciousness. Uh, I, we have to remember that Kardec used it for the codification uh, girls from 14, 15, 16 years old. 
Okay, we are not. We are uh, today uh, very cautious, of course, in terms of who are we and at what age we are going to be introducing our children to mediumship. So the theory is okay, but to the practice, they have to be mature. Because we also have to remember that, yes, they were 14, 15, 16, but at that time, at 14, 15, 16, you were a mother already, <laughs> or a father, <laughs> or at 35, you're dead. So, it's, you know, we have to take everything into consideration, the context of the time, and today, you know, we are a more... Um, preoccupied in actually giving our children and every, everyone actually the, the understanding of what it is a spiritism, what it is to be a medium, to become a medium and to use this mediumship, then actually like we said, just go there and sit on the table or you know and start uh, practicing mediumship. For us to be actually very sure that mediumship is not a privilege, Emmanuel tells us that very often the mediums are those that have abused power, authority, fortune, intelligence. I remember that is one of the, the stories in the, 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 from Chico Xavier uh, that he was uh, saying about uh, someone that was coming to, uh, back to reincarnation and it was offered to this person to have some physical uh, um, disabilities or to become a medium. The person said, I want to become a medium. <laughs> okay, but when it comes to the point where we have to actually exercise that to learn to use everything that this can give to us, we fail because we are not uh, entirely committed to the cause of helping ourselves and helping others. So we have to remember that it's a tool and that we are going to learn firsthand what the spirits are telling us. There is this uh, famous story of, uh, maybe you all heard that already from Divaldo himself, and of course he tells it, uh, you know, it's his experience, not mine, but that he tells that, that he was going through some difficult um, problems and that he went uh, to, and he talked to the spirit of Joanna de Angelis, kind of complaining to him about, you know, uh, you are always helping others, you di dictate so many messages, so many books, and here I am uh, going through all of this, and I haven't heard a single <laughs> thing from you, I haven't uh, written a single word, a word to me. And then patiently she asks him, asks him to grab a book and to open by chance and to read the message. And he starts, you, da 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 da, and you, da 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 da, and you, da da da, and then he, she asks him, who this you do you think I was talking to? You know, you are the you that I'm always talking to. You are always the first one receiving the knowledge. So we have firsthand the possibility of understanding and receiving these messages to put it into good use. So that's why it can help us so much as well. So, but Midian is not a saint, an apostle, or missionary. They are going to good things, bad things in life. In the same way we just illustrated with, uh, for you telling the story of Divaldo, Chico Xavier went through a lot of uh, uh, difficulties in his life as well. I have, of course, the impression that he went to that, not because of karma, but because he wanted to teach us that in spite of all the obstacles, of all all the impossibilities, the difficulties that you may face, you will still have time and have a way to think about your brothers and sisters. And so they all go through that and we all go through that. So if we start going to a spiritual center, to a mediumship, thinking now my life is going to get better, I will have no more problems. <laughs> false again, <laughs> okay? And that's the true answer. But we will we understand more. And we will know that we are not alone. 
and we will feel the presence of the spirits and every now and then we may even receive a direct message to us to give us words of encouragement so we will be in a much better place in a much better situation than before but it doesn't mean that we are not going to have to go through experiences and challenges that we have to go through so it's part of us, uh, our involvement spiritual involvement so the development of mediumship it does has nothing to do with the moral condition of the medium it's very much like you know we have our five senses and you will say you know that person curses so much it's gossip so much, destroy so much the life of others through the use of words that it would be better for them, you know, not to be, have the ability of talking. We have the ability of talking, even if we are not using this ability for our own benefit. It's our free will. With mediumship, it's the same thing. And in fact, if we think about it, it would be very good for people that actually needs more improvement than others to be able to have first-hand uh, knowledge of the existence of the spirits and all everything that we learn from 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 them. So let's see how they uh, it's possible for these two worlds to interact. So as le we are representing a spirit like this, and we have what we call our Paris spirit, that is, is still a physical body, but much more, much more ethereal than actually the physical body. So for a, sp a spirit is not an abstraction because it has the possibility of, oops, sorry, I, wait, hmm. no, sorry. Well, Sorry, <laughs> I don't know how to go back, but that's okay. Let me explain. So it is not getting back. No, yes. I'll let there. Mm. Oh, that, but that's that's okay. So this spirit has the possibility to the through the Paris spirit to get into communic to get into communication through the because of the spirit, Paris spirit with the incarnate words. And we will have another slide that will show uh, everything. So. After our physical death, we maintain our spiritual body, our spirit, and we maintain, therefore, the ability to think, we, uh, the com to communicate with our loved ones, to visit them, and to act upon matter. So this is what happens to us. There is no death. Life goes on, <coughs> and we have the ability of doing that. Oops, my God, now it's going crazy. <laughs> Let me go here, back here. Uh, maybe. Moving here. Is there any way to maybe if we disable this here? Now it will be better. I'm going to be disconnected. Yeah, it's a physical phenomenon. We are going to talk about it. I'm going to be better. Ah, you see? He is acting out. It's acting out. Don't worry, sir. Here, right? We were this one. Yeah, this one. Right? Mm-hmm. There. Okay. Now I'm gonna <laughs> touch here, okay, just to be sure. Um and I remove. Okay, so we have the uh, this drawing that shows us how the the spirit uses the intermediary, the body, the spiritual body, to actually be capable. <laughs> okay. To communicate with the physical world. 
<laughs> you are joking, but I, I have, I, I normally have a lot of problems with uh, electronics. I never realized that it could be something related to, to magnetism or something like that. I don't know, but uh, my phones never work. They never ring, and I change it four or five times already. And I mean, I'm changing for the new one now. Let's see if it's going to work. But sometimes, you know, I don't know if this it has anything to do about it. But so let's see here some of the considerations that we have for the possibility of the soul to manifest uh, after death. So how it happens? We have a spirit there, and as a spirit, we have also our uh, Paris spirit. And then we have this little guy here that has the physical body and then the Paris spirit. And of course, the spirits that is always together with the Paris spirit. So the way for us to communicate with the spirit realm is by detaching slightly from our physical body and then they communicate per spirit through per spirit. So this is more or less a vision that can uh, show us how po how is it possible for the spirit to come and to talk to us. So the forms of interchange of action that we have, we have through those aspects of mediumship. So the per spirit of the medium, like we showed in the example before, detaches a little bit. The it gets in touch with the pure spirit, spirit of the incarnate, and then transmits the image. I'm not an expert, actually I don't know anything about <laughs> electronics, but you know, we have to have the ways, the medium, when I just know how to turn on the TV and watch the, the, the show that I want to watch. But I'm sure, you know, very much like that, we have the satellites that capture images, wavelengths, and etc. It's very, you know, it's in a similar way, it's the same thing, to present the final product that is the show that I'm watching. There is the communication that is happening. Okay. The c many, uh, uh, in terms of the mediumistic contact, many of the mediums are going to have their spiritual guides, and they will have the possibility of attuning with those guides and receiving from them the, those communications. We always use the example of Chico Xavier and Divaldo, Joana, and Emmanuel, which were the spirit guides of those, uh, uh, of this, uh, are the spirit guides of those, those mediums, right? So in terms of mediumship, we have what we call two different kinds of mediumship. The one that we call the mediumship of physical effect, that is the one that presents physical effect. So in order for us to witness this kind of manifestation, we don't need to be a medium ourselves. The moment, you know, this start floating here, <laughs> okay, anyone that can make it float, I can't. It starts floating here and everyone is seeing that. We know there is a medium present, we know there is a spirit present, and everyone sees it, it independently whether we are a medium or not. In terms of intelligent ef effect, we are not going to witness through our vision. But we are going to witness that through the messages that they bring. So if a medium receives what we call a psychography, an automatic writing, the writings are going to benefit us. We are not witnessing in the same way as the physical effect, but they are capable, those mediums, of bringing this knowledge and this, uh, mes the messages from the spirits. Okay? And here we have some of the examples. Hearing mediums, speaking mediums, seeing mediums. Um, just as a remark, you see that in spiritism, normally we use the denomination of seeing mediums. We don't use clairvoyance. It's two different things. It is actually also uh, the difference that we may have, that we have between mediums and psychics. Psychics, they have what we call not all of them, of course, it's difficult. We cannot say this psychic is not a medium, because a, med a psychic may be a medium. 
a medium not necessarily will be a psychic. What is the difference? A psychic will see things, a clairvoyant will see things without the presence of spirits. They have what we call an anemic phenomena, which is not a mediumistic phenomena. So they are not being the intermediary. Of course, when you are not the intermediary of spirits, you know, for you to have a clear vision of things, it's not that easy. Okay, so that's why many times, quite often, a, a psychic will not make sense of what uh, the person is saying because it's more of an anemic nature than actually from a mediumistic nature. So this is the difference so that we, why we use the vocabulary, this vocabulary seeing medium to differentiate from a clairvoyant. Okay. So what do we have them in terms of physical effect? The manifestations of noises, movements, displacement of bodies, some of them are going to be in spontaneous uh, meaning. Uh, spirits will not know things are happening. For instance, Dr. Hernani Guimarães Andrade talks about a case of a young uh, a woman. She was 15 and she had what is called the pyrotechnic effect. Uh, things were started to burst and uh, getting into fire in her home, even if she was not present in the room where the fire started. So this is what we also call the, uh, the spontaneous effect. We don't, uh, she didn't even know she had uh, this kind of mediumship. She didn't even know she was the one producing the fires that were happening until they were researched and etc. And there are uh, other, in other cases that we have, the cases of mat materializations. So the explanation of the spirits uh, let me put all of this. It's a, a, a very simple. They explain to us that it's not the spirit that goes and lifts the table. When we see this uh, <laughs> floating, it's not that there is an invisible spirit like me here doing that. <laughs> okay, he's not doing that, or she's not doing that. You know, with the will, <laughs> and the power, <laughs> the mind. The, of course, the fluids that they have from themselves, the fluids that they have from the medium that are providing that, it floats. So they are more like a witness. They are not lifting that and doing that themselves. So it's a phenomena produced through uh, what we call the universal cosmic fluid. So let's see here. Uh, an example that we have in the books in the domain of mediumship, when it shows a case of materialization of physical phenomena. So for us to have physical phenomena, we have to have, I don't know, took a look at the, the watch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to have uh, a medium that is going to provide the material necessary for the phenomena to be produced. Like for instance now, we all would like to see this float, right? I think so, right? <laughs> but we don't have anyone here or and and the, maybe the spirits also are not willing to do that just for demonstration, they never do it. But in, to provide us at this exact moment the material required that we call ectoplasm for, you know, for a phenomena to be produced. It doesn't have to be that, it could be something else. Okay, so we see that, in, and here is where uh, what Vanessa was talking about in the beginning, it's very important and how we can understand that very well through spiritism. When we are committed to any kind of mediumship or mediumistic phenomena, we have first of all to understand that it's not up to us for the phenomena to, help, to happen. Actually, 
quite often we are the ones that jeopardize the possibility of the phenomena to happen, even in terms of physical phenomena or intelligent phenomena that we will see as well. Once we are committed for a good reason, and in this part of the book, they explain that they are gathered here to help a woman that is in, very, in a very serious uh, physical condition, and so they are going to uh, use the physical phenomena to heal her, to help her in, in terms of healing. And so that's why a group of spirits, uh, good willing spirits, are gathered together and, and, and doing their part in terms of preparing all the environment, all the ambient, in order to be able to do that and to help. So they have devices there that will help to ionize what they say the place. Maybe for us here, it, it, we feel that it's everything okay, but for the spirits, in, in the way they have to work in, in terms of uh, vibrations, in terms of uh, spiritual fluids, they need it to be even more uh, ionized. So they are going to be doing that. This, the, the medium, normally the medium that produces uh, physical manifestation, he, he, the medium gets into trance because it's going to be easier for the medium to release what we call the ectoplasm. And it's interesting also to notice that not necessarily ectoplasm is going to be visible. We have visible ectoplasm and we have invisible ectoplasm. Many times when we are receiving our passes in the spiritual center, ectoplasm is there. Because, uh, you know, the sp if there is someone in the audience that is need in need of assistance and the spirits are there and we are there to help them and they need an extra boost of ectoplasm, they are going to gather from the audience, from the environment, and help the person in need. Not necessarily we will see that. For materialization, most of the time we will see them, like it says here, uh, appears as a flexible paste, a glutinous jelly, semi-liquefied, coming from the orifices of the body. So the median is here, a little detached from his body, and producing this ectoplasm to be, so that uh, the phenomena may happen. In this case here, the spirit is using part of the ectoplasm in order to make what we call paraffin hands or paraffin uh, molds because the audience, they had 14 people there, were just being selfish, thinking about themselves, what they want from themselves, and some of them even came after, you know, having a very heavy meal. So they wanted to distract the audience to be able to engage them in what was about to happen. So this is one thing that they can do. And I brought here to you some of the uh, materializations that we had from, made from paraffin, from this very famous medium that we had in, in Brazil that is call, was called Ana Prado. She was a medium that could produce uh, materialization of spirits and as well they would uh, leave those like, you know, flowers made out of paraffin and, and so this is a, a, a common phenomenon in terms of mediumistic, um, mediumship of physical effect. Or like here, the spirit is presenting another phenomena. Using the same ectoplasm, the spirit goes and grab some flowers to bring to the audience, just to show the audience again that they are there, that things are happening, and for them to calm down a little bit. Now we have a materializa materialized nurse treating the woman that was in need of assistance, removing from the, her body 
and this is very much like, like, like the past has happened. Do you see here how beautiful it is, mediumship, and what we can do when we actually are committed to produce good and to help others and to engage others in their transformation? Because we are going to tell those people that are receiving treatment that, you know, it's not only they are receiving that because it's a chance for them to evolve and to learn and to do things, you know, in a different way. And, and so we, we bring then all the philosophy that is behind all of that. So the medium here is producing, uh, is removing the negative uh, bacteria, everything, and donating energy of health to the woman. It was very much like Jesus when he, uh, he was healing the sick. He was using the same ectoplasm, not necessarily materializing any spirit. He had uh, the ectoplasm himself and he could use that as a physical manifestation to help others and to call the attention of people that you know, about our spiritual nature, about things that we have uh, in life. Of course, in order for us to do that, any kind of commitment in terms of mediumship, and that's why many people run from the spiritual center, and for the commitment of actually helping, we need, we are donating our energy, our vibration, and this vibration cannot be contaminated with uh, bad habits and he eating, drinking, smoking, or whatever can contaminate our vessel. S and of course, most importantly, our moral and emotional balance. Because, you know, even if sometimes we like to eat a huge piece of chocolate cake, <laughs> okay. But I should not, or I should avoid, you know, engaging in situations that are going to make it very difficult for good spirits to come and to approach me. And if I present this too much, they cannot find a way to communicate and to come closer and to do the work they, of Jesus that they have to do. In terms of intellectual uh, manifestations, we have the, the, the uh, uh, brilliant example of Chico Xavier that received it now less count that I had uh, is uh, 450 books. So 450 books and he, he only had uh, <laughs> uh, up to the, the fourth, uh, fourth grade. So it's, it's, it's quite amazing, quite an achievement. He had the possibility of channeling the spirits, of receiving the communications, of learning. And this is how we work in terms of mediumship meeting. We <coughs> come to the meetings like we show in the first drawing like there. We sit ourselves. We are committed to the work that is going to be happening. The spirits are there sometimes, you know, for hours and hours and even from the previous day, just working and cleaning the, cleansing the room for us to come. Although sometimes we think, oh my God, how come they are going to help others? We don't see the spirits here. You know, the spirits are there, they bring the spirits to be assisted because this is one of the things that are the most important thing that we do in terms of mediumship in spiritism and what we also call the mediumship with Jesus. We use our mediumship not to our pleasure, not to, be, to receive uh, a message from our loved ones. And many people are actually frustrated because they say, well, I come to the Spiritual Center for 10 years to the mediumship meetings and I never once received a communication from one of my family members. We are not here for that. And it doesn't matter if we receive it or not. We know that they are alive. We know they continue to be there. We know that many times they may be even there, right next to us, um, helping us in what we have to achieve. But they are not going to, they know the responsibility and they know that in this case, time is of essence. They are not going to use precious time just to satisfy, to please us in our 
material needs, so to say. So this, and we use that as much as we can to help others, to have to help spirits that are brought, that are in very difficult conditions, like uh, the one we see in those four slides here. We see the spirit coming, approaching the median in the first slide, approaching the median, and how the median detaches uh, from her physical body and her, uh, the pure spirit of the spirit uh, starts taking over, taking over, but pay attention, always, always uh, the, the medium being the one controlling the communication and how through this connection the, the group of, of people present can help and assist the, me, the, the, the spirit to enlighten the spirit as to the new situation and to help the spirit to move on. And why is in our best interest to do that? Because every time we help a brother and sisters to move on and to, to, we are contributing for our world to be a much better place. And sometimes people say, oh, you know what, they, they, week after week, it's the, same, it's the same thing, the same kind of communication, this is kind of boring. And I say, you know what, have you realized that, you know, the majority of spirits that come are spirits that are linked to us. So when I move away and enlighten a spirit such as this one, it may be an obsessor that was with me. So I'm helping the spirit, but I'm also helping myself because we can be sure that this, the, 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 the spirits that the, the, uh, the spirits bring to us in a mediumship meeting, most of the times are related to the community that um, attend uh, that place. So it's very important for us to understand that. And one thing is we never are afraid of giving ourselves uh, or, 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 or lending somehow our body, our possibilities of communication to a spirit. If you pay attention to the first slide, we have one spirit that is really in bad shape and in need of assistance. And three others, they are very good spirits, one of them particularly very enlightened spirits, just helping us in that. So for one, that is, I have three, they are just, they are just for me, just for us, <laughs> helping us. So it should never be a justification or an excuse on our part to say, oh, I'm afraid, I don't know, those spirits are going to leave some, you know, negative fluids behind. There is no way it's going to happen. Look at the proportion. If we are talking about mediumship in the way that we work in spiritism, with discipline, with commitment, with understanding of what we want to achieve and how good it can be for us and for spirits and for humankind in, in general, then we can be sure that we are going to be assisted in the best way possible. In terms of obsessions and addictions, we see that, you know, we cannot prevent ourselves from receiving influence of negative spirits. So it, it, it's no use. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm afraid of spirits. I'm not going to go to the spiritual center. Well, you are acting like an ostrich, you see. You put your, 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 you bury, bury your head on the, the ground and you make believe to yourself that, you know, there is nothing happening around because I cannot see. So it's much worse. We have to understand that this interchange with the spirit world happens in our daily lives. And sometimes all of a sudden we have a lofty, uh, beautiful inspiration. Other times we may be you know, having not such a, a good uh, vibration or communication. So spirits will try to use us to satiate their physical needs. They may take really advantage of us. And if we give them the chance to do that, 
it's complicated. It can be very complicated. So remember that I was saying about, you know, uh, it shows also in the domain of mediumship, this man that wants to, uh, to provoke a scandal, to write uh, pages, and he works for a newspaper. And, uh, and uh, because of the nature of his thoughts and uh, what he wants to do, he attunes with a spirit that wants to affect the victim of the person that his, uh, the, the journalist wants to write about and uh, in inspire the journalist to, you know, to even more uh, describe, uh, uh, to describe even more, uh, you know, uh, liars and scandals and everything. So, and we, the problem is, like we were saying before, this spirit here is next to him just because he wants to affect the young lady. But what if he likes him? You say, you know what, I use it him so well, I'm going to keep on using him for this and for other things. So this is how, you know, we have all of that. And that's how we have to learn that it's only through our understanding, only through our spiritual cleansing, that we can prevent ourselves to have this kind of uh, uh, communications. Mediumship then was given to us for a serious and useful purpose. That is what we, you know, the ABC of mediumship in terms of, uh, of spiritism is for a serious and useful purp uh, purpose. If we are not doing that, if it's not that our goal, we should not play with fire because this is playing with fire. If we do not understand the laws that regulate this kind of communication, how the spirits approach, how we can send them away, if we are not protected, remember, one in bad shape, three good ones. What if I'm doing like, okay, let's have a mediumship meeting right now. Well, in this place, we, 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 we could even have a mediumship place, uh, a meeting right now. Although it's not the time, it's not uh, pre-established with the spirit world, of course. But let's say we are someplace else and say, well, okay, let's do that, the Ouija board. Spirits and good spirits, they are very busy. Busy bees. <laughs> busy, 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 busy. They don't have, they don't just, uh, okay, I, I have decided to do that now. Come, spirits. They have their commitments. And they don't have time to waste with people that are only want to abuse from a sacred possibility. So it's very important for us to be aware of that and to understand that. And if we cannot, don't play with fire. Oh, it's a little too dark here. Let's see if I can read to you. So to practice uh, the mediumship and spiritism, we have to practice mediumship with simplicity and humility. We are here to serve, <laughs> to help the spirits. And it's an agreement that we have accomplished before reincarnation. It's not that all of a sudden say, okay, I, I became a medium. No, it's something that before my reincarnation, we have already uh, committed ourselves to this task. And it's a great way for us, like we said, to alleviate the pain that exists in both worlds. So this is how we uh, actually, uh, talking about mediumship with Jesus, we uh, invite each and every one of you, especially in this year that we are celebrating the 150 years of the Medium's book, to actually you know, go through the pages again. Uh, re if you are interested in the subject, try to understand how it can be such a powerful uh, possibility for us to grow, spiritually speaking, to evolve. Uh, like we said before, it's not necessary for us to be a medium uh, to actually evolve and to do good works for humanity. And we have plenty of examples uh, 
that we could uh, we we could mention that it could come to our minds right now, but it's another opportunity, is another way, is another avenue, and if we were actually called at this time in in life to come and to be part of our spiritist community, it is you know they are telling us something. They are telling us that for now, for this incarnation perhaps, this should be our way of helping in the dissemination of this beautiful philosophy that we have, of this powerful, the powerful knowledge that we already have within us, in our hands, of which mediumship is a part. Let us remember that, and next time we, 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 we feel ourselves called or somehow inspired by the good spirits to actually uh, try to each time more to, to feel their presence and to be open to their influence. So many people come to us in need of assistance, in need of a friendly word. And uh, we can do that in our workplace, in our f uh, uh, home, with friends. So let's uh, remember that we are all brothers and sisters. And as such, no privileges. We all are going through a lot of cha challenges in life and we can use this possibility whether we are a medium or not because we all can feel and, 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 and somehow also be the vessel of the spirits to spread good words, to spread optimism in our uh, world. It is a time where we are going through a, a transition in our world, not a physical transition of the planet, but the, a spiritual, moral transition of its uh, inhabitants. And with that, knowing and understanding our role in this lifetime, with mediumship, with the model that we have, Jesus, we can actually accomplish great things, even for our, <laughs> you know, s small spirits, you know, that are just crawling in direction of the light. We now know better. We had other opportunities before, we passed them. We have this opportunity now. We don't know when we are going to have another one. So let's use this one. Let's do and go through this transition, our personal transition, and use all this knowledge, use all these tools, and use mediumship if we have it to accomplish that and to become a better human being, better spirits, in the name of Jesus, in the name of our Heavenly Creator. I thank you so much for your attention, for this blessed opportunity. I'm very happy to be here with you, to be part of this celebration. Uh, congratulations for the Spiritist Society of Baltimore for the 13 years. It, I, we know how hard it is. One year after one year, people may say, oh my God, it's been 13 years already. It's piece of cake. It is not. <laughs> it never is. The more, <laughs> it's like, you know, becoming an adult, like, you know, the more we grow, it seems the more we, <laughs> we have to handle. And it's with great happiness, I think, that we already understand that. So we are not afraid of handling <laughs> more problems, more difficulties, more challenges, and we are very blessed to, to know and to have uh, this house, this uh, spiritist society opened to shelter and to guide and to enlighten so many people and so many spirits that come here in, uh, in search of this asylum, of this oasis in the middle of the turmoil that we live in. Uh, currently in our world. But this is going to change and it thanks to the efforts of people that are not afraid of keeping up with the good work that we are going to see all this change happening. Congratulations to you all and with all my heart I really thank you because without all this work and the inspiration that we have always received, I'm sure others we are not going to be doing the same thing.
now <coughs> for questions related to the topic. Thank you for your wonderful talk. Um, we hear that some not well-intended spirits, sometimes they use the identity of some known spirits. How the medium sh should uh, secure the authenticity of the spirits that are sending the message? How can you assure of this? I'm not going to answer this question. The medium's book is going to answer this question. <laughs> In the medium's book, I'm not going to remember the page, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I am not going that far. They tell us, and the spirits tell us, that we are going to know the nature of the spirit, but the nature of the messages they are going to be bringing to us. So sometimes we may have messages that may be signed by Benjamin Franklin, Abraham Lincoln themselves. But when you read that, you say, oh my God, uh, maybe it was another Benjamin Franklin, not the one that we, we know of, right? So they always tell us to pay attention to the content. And, and to such a point that is not even whether they are using uh, sophisticated uh, words or a very rich vocabulary. It can be very simple in their simplicity, but in the content. We will see and we will analyze that. Let us remember the, uh, the, one of the messages that we talk more in the, the spiritist uh, uh, community uh, regarding uh, a, a conversation between uh, Chico Xavier and, uh, and Emmanuel. When Chico Xavier asked well, how, what could he do to become you know, a better serve and then Emmanuel just said three words, discipline, discipline, discipline. We could say it's just one word. And, and so we see that when it is a spirit, a good natured spirit, or even a more evolved spirit come to bring a message, it will not just, you know, show uh, uh, higher education or a, a, a sophisticated vocabulary they will they are very worried and they are going to be thinking about the content and that's why also we have in the in the explanations of the books of the codification what the reason why they are very simple straight to the point because it is supposed to each and to be at the reach of each and every one, independent of the kind of education you had the opportunity of having in this life. So this is going to be always the best formula. If it signs, if it doesn't sign, if whatever name it uses, it doesn't matter. It has to be the content of the message. Of course, the medium will perceive a certain vibration, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. And we have seen good mediums, experienced mediums, sometimes being deceived because, you know, uh, you don't have all, every, t every kind of mediumship. And so we were capable of writing, but not necessarily of feeling the, uh, of having a, a higher sensibility in terms of the presence of the spirit, of seeing actually the countenance of the spirit that is dictating the message. So we always stick with the content and we always will compare the content with what we have in spiritism. Thank you, Josara. I want to relate to you a question before we go to another question regard to that um, somebody who cannot be here today asking me to ask you and they are probably watching over the internet in regard to mediumship with Jesus. This person who is learning about spiritism said Oh, but you know, what is tricky for us Americans is to, you know, it's too much about inner transformation. And it cannot be possible that to deal with mediumship, and now we're talking about mediumship with Jesus, it's all about this inner transformation. Mm -hmm. How could we explain to these friends that there is no other okay. way? 
I believe that this is the reason why you also have in Spiritism and Kardec attested that that we will it will come a time where Spiritism will walk hand in hand with science. Because I believe there are certain things that only science can explain, and not the science that we have today, but the science that we are still uh, going to learn when we finally accept the existence of the spirits that we the continuation of life then we are going to be researching new areas so i would say that this answer i think pertains more to the realm of physics and biology but not the physics and biology that we have now for instance we know and in a very rudimentary way that because of the in the emission of energy that each individual actually transpires, it will be uh, capable of getting in tune with other emissions of energies that uh, are in the same, let's say, wavelength. So if I want to guarantee that I want to receive communications from more evolved spirits that are, you know, in a, 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 a much faster wavelength that I am because, uh, you know, I'm uh, slower, <laughs> right? Uh, more to the ground or it's, it's it, uh, unless I try to raise myself and they try to reduce their level, they cannot get into us. And the only way we can do that is actually by our inner transformation. Our inner transformation in this case means understanding that we have to do some, to actually uh, peel off the layer of the old soul, the old individual that we were, and it starts seeing the brightness that exists in us. So the only way we can do that through self-knowledge, uh, know thyself, in, in, and actually engaging in this work of inner transformation, we can actually change our frequency. And this frequency will make it possible for us to get in touch with uh, more evolved spirits. Once Divaldo explained it in a very simple way, he said, uh, let's say that we we are uh, our fre frequency goes in the f uh, forty percent, and the spirits that are suffering spirits when they come to talk to us and they uh, we, we are going to assist them, they are twenty percent. Twenty and forty do not communicate. So how? Can a spirit, a suffering spirit, 20, communicate through the 40? So, see how complex it is, mediumship? Not just, oh, I'll go there and I communicate. It's not like this. It's absolutely not like this. The good spirits have to do a very good work on this spirit to bring their level a little bit, removing them from the fixed idea, from ambience, environments that they were, that were actually making them even more um, uh, in a state of suffering than they, they could be just by themselves. So they raise it a little bit. And when they approximate us because of the level of suffering they have, their proximity to us make us feel a certain discomfort. And this discomfort will reduce our frequency momentarily from 40, let's say, to 30. And here they come from 20 to 30. So we match and we give the communication. The same thing in terms of the good spirits. They are 80. <laughs> Could be 100, but let's say 80. So they want to talk to us. It's not compatible. How do they do that? They come to us and start inspiring us with, oh, remember I was watching that lecture. How beautiful the teachings about Jesus and how, how can I understand him so much more like now, all his goodness. And, and when we start thinking like that, we raise ourselves. And by the simple approximation and the desire to be close to us, 
they reduce themselves and we find a way of actually attuning and communicating. So that's why, depending on our objectives, and I know that people that normally ask this kind of question, their objective is not to go down below and to help the poor little spirits. They want to go up high and to talk to the uh, wise spirits, enlightened spirits, unless we follow what Jesus taught him, taught us. I'm the truth, the life, and the way. Meaning, unless we go and we track and we follow the path, the way that Jesus taught us, and working in our inner transformation, we are not going to be capable of reaching spirits that uh, are far beyond our level of frequ frequency. And so that's, that's a very simple reason. But the, of course, I'm sure that this one day are going to be proved in laboratory. They are going to sh show the, mo the different molecules that of human beings, even incarnates, how their molecules are going to be different and how, the, you know, somehow I'm sure this is going to happen someday and, and, and then it's not going to be more a questionable um, uh, thing for, in our minds. We will understand why it is important for us to, to work in this way. Yes, please. I have a much deeper understanding from your teaching this evening on the nature of a medium, their personality, um, their repairing past life problems. So what I'm thinking is a person who is an ostensible medium really has to be more disciplined than the average person. I'm, it's kind of a question to you in terms of their Oh, nutrition and their exercise and the content of their thoughts and communication. Well, let's say in a very, sorry, maybe a very simple way. It's like, you know, any other job. <laughs> uh, for me to get a job, I will send my application. I will have to have certain skills to be able to, um, um, sorry, I missed it, huh? to do what I have to do. <laughs> I cannot hear what you're saying, sorry. So to be a, a good worker in that, that field. So yes, we do have to have certain skills that perhaps, then again, I'm just using an analogy, another profession does not require. Okay, so it is required that we, we'll, like we showed here, that we will be more uh, mindful of our behavior, more mindful of what we eat, how, how we nourish ourselves, how I conduct my life, uh, my, my, myself in the presence of life. But it, I mean, it's not an exclusive thing of uh, being a medium or being a spiritist. Everyone should be doing that. But in order for us to be a good medium, the way we understand and we strive to be in terms of spiritism, yes, we do have to try our best to differentiate ourselves from, from what we were before, we are not comparing ourselves with anyone else. And the more I'm capable of doing that, of having skills that are going to make me a better um, worker, a better practitioner, so uh, uh, more I will be able to achieve for myself and for others and to help. All right. All right. Thank you, Josiah. Thank you. <laughs> so today, as we are meditating so deeply about these issues, we would say that to 
all those who are present or listening, maybe elsewhere, coming to Spiritist Talks is a boost and a teaser. But without studying other days of the week, we cannot make miracles. So coming here, it's a great input that Josara gave to us, more than an input, a lot of instructions. But these teachings, they are in the courses we give here on Thursday at Roadmap Program. So you haven't heard this before, probably you haven't been here before. But it's available in the Roadmap Program. It's available in the Medium's book. The Spiritual Society of Baltimore, as any serious society, provides serious courses for people like we do. Our mediumistic group is certainly fully trained and continuously educating itself to make sure we align ourselves in the very manner that Josara explained. Serious spiritual centers are just like this. And we would invite you, come. Plus, this week, probably, uh, probably no, for sure, in the light of the illuminated spirits, we're studying chapter 17 of the evolution into worlds, which is about mediumship and the spiritual body. Josiah's last explanation about the emissions of the medium is, in some other way, the very words of Andre Lewis in that chapter when he begins about it. We're going to continue the study of that chapter this next Thursday. So you're welcome to come and continue these thoughts about mediumship, how we train, because evolution into worlds as the spirit sort of Baltimore is not only translated, translating the book, but doing the course every week. We are getting deeper and deeper in this idea. So you're invited also to join us on Thursdays. Again, we're very thankful to Josara for her coming here all the way from New York. Tomorrow she'll be with us in the spirit sort of Virginia at 11 a.m. The topic is the same, but like last week, or our personal experiences also, the speakers of the SSB, when we go to Virginia, when we go there, it's a different community and uh, different needs. The topic, for reasons that only the good spirits know, always tilt to specific features and needs. Like last week, Emma Bragdon was there, the talk she gave here, though the same title, was very different in many ways and stories than the one she gave in Virginia. So if you are available tomorrow, it's not going to be too much. It's going to be very important to reinforce what we've got to know and to get to know more because especially Josiah is a medium too and I bet she's going to be also all the more inspired there to teach us about mediumship with Jesus. Who is Jesus? Why do we need mediumship with Jesus? Because he's a guidance model. It's not about this man that people encapsulated in sectarian religions. Because when we separate ourselves from others, we're not aligned with Jesus. It's only when we are one with everyone. Look at Paul. Paul and Paul and Stephen. When we read this book, we're fully aware that if we really aligned with the man, the man, and it's beyond like the man, man in the physical body, this mind, the Christ consciousness, we go beyond. Without Paul, the Gentiles would never know of Jesus. If he were restricted to only those who were open, we wouldn't be here. Because at least I and my family have no Jewish blood so I wouldn't have any possibility of hearing about Jesus. So we also, spiritists, are called, even though we're talking about mediumship with Jesus, to be a good bridge in the world. We want people to hear about spiritism, to be open-minded. Let's be the first ones to be open-minded. Because Emmanuel says, the good mediums are everywhere and elsewhere. In the Book of Consolador, he says, 
and also the Vinha de Luz. The men and women of science are true ministers of God. We were talking about Stephen Post, who gave a recent talk in New York, who uh, came to Kardec Radio to share the science of charity. Jesus' approach. He, not only he is a Christian man, but he is teaching us that science is proving that if we have all the gifts of the world, but if we don't share and we don't reach out, we don't feel good. We only feel good when we do good. So in that line of thought, we would like to ask 